everyone is Wilson here today let's talk about finding the distance from a point to a plane okay so how do we do that there are different ways to do it uh, in this video we are just going to use the formula that you usually will see in your textbooks which is this formula here uh, just to save the time then I actually recall the whole theorem about finding uh, this distance from this given point P to uh, this plane. And so you can see that we all we need to do is to figure out what to plug into the formula, then we can figure out the answer. And uh, later on, I'm going to make a new video that will show you how to do the problem without using the formula. Okay, so make sure that you stay tuned for that one. And then here now, let's try to do this problem. So first, we are going to start by writing down the point. And so what is the point? The point is this point here, two, negative one, negative two. So we can just write, call this point P. So P is two, negative one, and negative two. And you know what that is already because um, this point is actually our point P and then the X zero, Y zero and Z zero are really just the, those three values right here. So we can just label them first. So X zero, Y zero, Z zero. Okay, so that's good. And then now what about the plane? The plane is this plane, right? And then we are going to rewrite this plane so that it's in this form, okay? So that you can see that on the right side of the equation, there is a zero. So we need to do something to this equation so that we have a zero on the right side of the equation. Okay, so what do we do? We are going to start by writing this, rewriting this plane. So we are gonna get three X plus two Y plus six z is equal to five, right? And all I need to do is to subtract five from both sides. And then we are going to get three x plus two y plus six z and then minus five is equal to zero. And so now this equation is in this form and we can actually just write down the lowercase a, b and c. Okay, so what happens is that we have the a as three, and then the B is the what, the two, and then the C is the what, six, and then there is also the K. The K, remember that uh, because this number is a negative number, so the K is, make sure that to include the negative sign. So K is this number here. So K is negative five, not just five. Okay, uh, the other three that because they're all positive coefficients. So uh, that's why I didn't highlight the sign right here, but if there is a negative sign here, make sure you include the sign as well, okay? So once we get all those A, B, C, K, and then X zero, Y zero, Z zero, we are ready to plug into the formula. Um, one thing that I wanna point out here is that, you know that for um, many of the textbooks, they actually, instead of using K here, they use D here. I actually used uh, uh, this, this theorem, the version from OpenStax Calculus 3, the reason for why I like this one better is because they changed this one instead of a D to a K so that there is no variable conflict because otherwise you need to use one as a capital letter and the other one as a lowercase letter. Here, we don't need to worry about that anymore. Okay, so now the rest is really just plugging stuff into the formula. So now the formula, we have D is equal to, okay, so let's see what's going on when we try to stop plugging in stuff in there. So we are going to have the absolute value and then A times X zero, right? What is A? A is three. So we are going to just get the three here. And then X zero is the two, right? So we are going to put down the two, okay? And then plus, right? Because the, the there is the plus right here. And then B times Y zero. So B is the what, the two. And then Y zero, Y zero is negative one. So we are going to get times negative one. And then plus, continue. C times Z zero, right? So C is six. And then uh, six. And then what is that? The Z zero is the negative two, right? So we are going to put in the negative two here. And then next we have the plus K, right? Plus K, K remember that we also need to include the sign. It's a really common mistake not to include the sign. So make sure that we include the sign here. Minus K right here. I mean, plus K, but then it's minus five right here. Okay, so that's ending the uh, the absolute value right here. And then what happens next is that the denominator, so we are going to put down the square root and basically, this square root of a square plus b square plus c square, it's actually the magnitude 
of the normal vector for this plane. As you know that the normal vector for this plane, okay, the normal vector is what? If you just look at the coefficients of the x, y, z, it's actually three and two and then six, right? And so this right here, it's actually just the normal vector of this. And so we are going to get three square plus two square plus six square. What's next? Um, we are going to just do the computation here. So this is quite straightforward to do the computation. So now just continue with the computation here. We are going to get absolute value of six and then minus two and then minus 12 and then minus five. And then in the denominator continue. So we get three square, we get nine. Two square, we get four. Six square, we get 36. So adding 36. Okay, now. Continuing with the calculation, we have what? Six minus two is four. Four minus 12 is negative eight. Negative eight minus five is negative 13. So we are going to get negative 13, but that's inside the absolute value symbols. And then what do we have here? This is what four plus 36 is 40, 49, right? Square root of 49. Now, simplifying the top and the bottom, we get the final answer. So what is this? This is the uh, absolute value of negative 13, which is positive 13. And then what about the denominator here? That's really just seven. So the distance between this point and the plane is 13 over seven. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Uh, I will show a video of the same example, but we do it without using the formula. So please make sure that you uh, look for that video really soon. Okay, um, if you like this video, please subscribe and also share this video to others. Thank you for your help. I will see you next time.